Welcome to this edition of House of Preeminence. This edition is all about wellness, wildness, and woo. But, and they're not all related. So this is a time when we are going back to taking care of ourselves in our homes. In fact, we've had to learn to take care of ourselves in our homes over, over the last two years, the years during the pandemic. And there's been such a resurgence in self-care and wellness. Now, I am always on the cusp of new ways of taking care of ourselves in a completely holistic way. And I am super excited to introduce my guest today and a methodology which could absolutely change your life. Now, I've been, as if any of you know me, I've been a sports, sport person, a dancer, exercising, um, fanatic about wellness all of my life. And this is the first time I, I've discovered this, but I knew that there was something important about, about it, something really vital that can heal pain, that can rejuvenate you, that can, that can, tone your body that has so many benefits I'm going to let her talk about it it is truly innovative amazing and for absolutely everybody so welcome all the way from Winnipeg Canada my gorgeous Diana Hansen thank you so much Jennifer I am so absolutely pleased to be here and to be sharing this time with you and Having the reach that you do, I, I can't thank you enough for inviting me on your show. Oh, this is just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. This is just the beginning. We've got we've, we've we've got to we've got to get this 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 gorgeous tool out there. So, it was only very recently that you were introduced to me, and I jumped on this like a shot because of having had injury in my life as as a um, as a you know person who's always taking physical activity, but also very, very acutely aware of the aging process of uh, posture changes and um, strange things that happens in strange areas <laughs> and always on the lookout for something. And this is all about um, taking care of your fascia, what you call the fascia. I, I'm used to calling it fascia, <laughs> uh, but in the in the English pronunciation, but it is fascia. And I'd love you to to explain first of all what what fascia is and why it is so integral to our whole well being and and our all of our systems, everything. Um, great timing because just last week we had an interview with. Gil Headley, who's an anatomist, and probably 15 years ago, I first watched his fuzz speech. If you just Google the fuzz speech, you'll find Gil Headley. And it was so impactful in the moment because I was teaching therapists fluid isometrics. So block therapy, what we're going to be talking about today is the self-care version of fluid isometrics. So as I'm teaching therapists to dive into this fascia system and really understand the dynamics of this tissue and how incredibly potent it can be in holding the body out of alignment, his fuzz speech really brought to light how how scar tissue builds and continues to build over time. And he was saying in certain areas of the body with the cadavers, he would have to use a scalpel to actually cut through this tissue. And I learned years ago that it can hold and bind to itself, other structures and bone with a force up to 2000 pounds per square inch. So if, as we age, gravity is constantly pulling us down and because we're not conscious. I mean, some of us may be some of the time, but I don't think I have yet to meet anybody that's conscious 24 seven. We are not conscious of our breath. We're not conscious of our proper alignment. And the whole goal is to have each and every cell where it's supposed to be. What happens over time as we age, I call it cell migration. The cells start to pull away from their home. And because the body is designed to keep us upright, adhesions develop to attempt to stop us from tipping over. And the further we fall from alignment, the more adhesions get created and it becomes this, um, this pattern that propels over time. So the way I actually see the fascia, 
it's basically the cell membrane connecting every other cell membrane in this full body net, this matrix. So when we were discussing with Gil last week, it was lovely because as he's diving in over the years and learning more and more about the fascia, he started talking about the perifascia system. And I said, that's actually what block therapy is focused in. It's the perifascia because we understand the fascia, like the iliotibial band, for example, that IT band on the side of the leg, that's a thick band of fascia. Um, and it's all interconnected and related, but there's more subtle layers of the fascia that interconnects everything, the organs, the bone, the, the blood vessels, nerve fibers, every single cell in the body is interconnected through this beautiful communication system. So I basically see it as one full um, art, artistry from God. <laughs> It, it, it is, and and I've and I've watched I've watched your your videos on um, on the website in the, at the beginning of the training, and why I was so excited was that um, quite some years ago, uh, uh, about about eighteen years ago, I had a tendonitis. Um, I did develop tendonitis in my right ankle because of a a dance injury. And I kept on exercising on it. I was actually, I was actually continuing to, to, to do ballet on a, on a, on, with a tendonitis ankle until I couldn't walk anymore. And I had the chance to go to a physiotherapist here in, in France who did something that nobody else did. And, and I don't know what the technology is called. It was, it was a gr aggressive hammer pressure. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd never seen it before. And it, and it and it was it was like tapping on the pain on the pain points and he had everybody in cabinets all, all, all in like curtained cabinets and it was excruciating but when I, I asked him what what's the what's the technology I mean what what are you doing like <laughs> putting people for free pain and he said I'm fine I'm finding what where the pain is linked to their body and I'm working on it and I, and I can't remember the word fascia but 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 I, I know enough about the body to understand and the thing is that that my tendonitis uh, disappeared I, I was told I would never run again possibly walk even properly but it's it's it, it went so I was really intrigued by that um the, the way that he he dealt with pain which I'd never heard of and the second time that I came across this was when I had my hotel and, and we were working 18, 18, 24, 18 hours a day, seven days a week. And my body was all over the place because I was I was a chef. So I used to get a, a, um, a, fascia, a fascia massage therapist to come in about once a month and cried while she, while she prodded me all the way over. And she started to explain to me now what you've just de you've just de uh, developed is something that allows people oh, so many so many different aspects of it is to address and 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 help themselves with this incredibly vital system um but that as you as you said because it's linked to everything else it has knock-on effects on everywhere else so so take us take us deeper with that when I do assessments on people, they send photos in. And so I always ask their top three concerns so I can make sure that I'm addressing what's bothering them. But then I really simply look at the body and I see the way the fascia has wound around the structure. Specifically, whenever I'm starting, I look at the calves and the feet, because what we need to understand is that our body needs to be a certain temperature for optimal flow. And if cells have enough flow to receive nutrients, oxygen, and also to be cleaned continuously, that flow leaves us in a healthy state because cells are happy, they're being fed and they're clean. And when we're happy and fed and clean, we're, we, we generally function well. So it's when cells don't receive the nutrients that they require that they start to give us a sensation of pain. Um, but because we aren't really trained to look at pain in a positive way, we avoid pain, we mask it, we automatically posturally avoid, we're very adaptable creatures, which has a lot of benefits, but it also has a lot of consequences because we can adapt so readily until we can't. And that's the moment when suddenly somebody wakes up and they've got chronic back pain and there wasn't an event 
previous that would give them the understanding of why am I in pain? I haven't done anything recently. Well, it's been an accumulation of postural avoidance and a whole bunch of things. We're dominant on one side, so we don't use our body in a balanced, symmetrical way. All of these things over time add up. And again, because we don't understand this, things like sports, I mean, the, the hardest people that I work on are the athletes because most sports are so unilateral in one sided of the body, whether you're playing tennis, I was a provincial volleyball player. The number of times I went through this action, I never did it with this side of my body. So I rotated my body out of alignment. And then if you do that, especially when you're a child and you're growing from that place of dysfunction, then there's a whole other scenario that we need to look at, not to mention what stress does, because stress and fear and pain cause us to reactively hold the breath. And who's not stressed, especially today. <laughs> so all of these components of life essentially add up, they affect how we breathe, and they affect how we move in our bodies. And that translates to how we look, and how we function and how we even perceive life to be. So there's three pillars to block therapy, basically. The first pillar is creating space. So at my age of 52, I've come a long way. I can't even imagine if I'd be alive today had I not you know, um, uncovered this because I was on such a path of destruction in my 20s. But what we do when we start blocking is we start tapping in. Here's the tool, here's the block buddy. This is the, the basic size. And then we've got a smaller one. Both sizes are beautiful to have. And what you do is you lie on this tool and you start searching for pain. And as you very slowly move on the block, we're not sliding on the block, we're connecting into those layers of fascia. We're looking for pain because pain equals adhesion. And then we spend time with it. We heat it up with the breath. The second pillar is proper diaphragmatic breathing. When we breathe diaphragmatically, it's like turning on the body's furnace. Most people are breathing through the muscles of the upper chest. So it's like a space heater. So essentially our bodies are cold and where they're, they're cold, there's less flow. So the goal is that we get this incredible mechanism, the diaphragm, it's a plate of muscle that exists just below the ribs. And when it's working up and down like this, when we inhale, the uh, diaphragm moves down, when we exhale, it moves up and it's this internal pump. It gives the internal organs a continuous massage. And when it's strong and working fully, it can feed the body up to six times the oxygen. So we, all, we have to think about that for a moment because so many people um, in nutrition talk about superfoods and all of the benefits of feeding our body proper nutrients. But I see that there's often a lack of discussion on the necessity for feeding the body optimal amounts of oxygen. We die in five minutes if we're deprived of oxygen. And every single cell is, is a mini brain essentially. So every cell will thrive if properly fed. And when we breathe up through here, we simply don't do that. So if we aren't trained to be conscious diaphragmatic breathers over time, pain, fear, and stress causes to reactively hold the breath. And then this plate of muscle, that's really the foundation of the rib cage. It starts to weaken and we start to collapse into our internal core, into our space. And we start displacing organs. And because we don't have that pump working and giving those organs a manual massage, they become frozen and they don't work efficiently. Liv uh, fatty liver disease, for example, is one of the um, main things on the rise for people. And the liver is this massive organ right here. It has so many, many functions, one of which is to keep the blood clean. When we're breathing properly, we keep this organ heated. When we're collapsed in and we're all twisted and we're breathing up through here, there's nothing happening here. So think of butter at room temperature compared to if you heat it, it gets, it becomes a solid. So people have all this fat clogging the liver's ability to really clean the blood. It's like a, it's a filter, filtration system. So all of these things add up over time, but the most important piece, not the most important, is the third pillar. It's the most challenging piece to change is postural alignment because how we move all the time adds up to what we're dealing with in our bodies from a perspective of pain and disease. So the calves and the feet, they are the furthest from the engine. So they are the most frozen held fascia in the body. And as we are built to move and swivel and have all of these wonderful abilities to act in life, if we don't use the body properly, we fall into these habits. So one leg ends up pulling you one way, the other leg 
stacks the body to try to stop it from tipping over. And you've created this internal war inside yourself. So if I have a frozen shoulder up here and I work on my shoulder, it might feel good for a moment. But if I start walking, that pattern of fascia that I'm already in is going to pull me right back into that posture that's creating the internal tension so the pain comes back and then we run in circles so with block therapy we take a full body approach we look at the cause sites to the pain we address those as well as the pain sites and we really are basically it's really simple in concept it's really all about making sure that your cells are situated exactly where they should be so they can be properly fed and clean lifelong and then we shouldn't even really go through a process of aging that's that's a, that's a mic drop moment. <laughs> we, we, uh, when you get get me on that, then that's a mic drop moment. Cool. <laughs> and, 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 uh, because it'll get people's people's ears flapping. There's so much in there that 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 um that it, that is just fascinating, and uh, that that that, it, that seems so log logic, and that people haven't heard about. And what, one of the things I was I was thinking while I was um, starting to go to my blocks this morning was how um how we've become a, a, a race that needs to compensate you know is that everything is, is is in compensation everything because because modern lifestyle has just just it's just disastrous for for yeah. for what this natural alignment you know i mean that you, yes. you 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 see these these joke pictures of um like you know five five men going from eight eight man up to here and then the next one is, the next one is this one which is you know looking at the phone but I mean it's it's so true it, it, it is so true and, and goodness knows what what's going to happen to the next the next generation I just well on that point and what was really terrifying for me one of my community members posted a photo that they saw of a mannequin and the youth today are in turmoil, their postures, because they grew up in front of technology. You and I, we adopted technology as an adult, likely, or a, after we were fully grown. There's, there's two-year-olds on phones. And what that does to them in that pull forward um, posture that is constant, it, and, and, and the lack of breath that's resulting from that, they are twisting so quickly out of alignment. And the amount of scoliosis that I'm seeing in them is, is truly frightening. And I saw an actual mannequin displaying the posture of what is common in the youth today. And that terrified me because to me, that says they believe that's normal. And this is so far from where it should be. Uh, we, we are going to be launching our Block Therapy Academy for kids in 2022. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> I don't even know anymore in 2022. And I am so excited for this because this is a solution for them. And they are already older in their bodies than we are because right. of how they're growing up and the lack of oxygen that they're receiving every single breath. So, um, yeah, it's 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 whacked. <laughs> it's whacked. I, 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 heard, I heard you say that um, yesterday on, on the video. And I, I just I it, honestly, it, it just made, made me want want to weep and fabulous yes. that there's going to be th this for for you know for, for, for young people something something big needs to happen to yeah. you know to to get us back in into um and this is my this is my passion is is showing people that they can integrate simple simple practices and simple rituals and routines in in their daily life and they must you know if they do want to live a good time and have a and have a high quality life and, and live as for as long as possible and attract abundance because everything every everything yes. is is connect everything is connected so one thing that that I, that I heard you talk about was um how the body locks in trauma from such an early age and you gave the you gave the um example of your little of your little uh pinky finger which was got run over and how that locked in um which made again makes so much sense maybe you could just um explain the process of that because uh, you know like we we had a lot of scrapes when we, we were young uh, you know falls and and breakages and and um all sorts of things all sorts of traumas so just just tell us how that trauma kind of anchors itself in so the second law of thermodynamics is nature abhors a gradient and when i was 
th this whole process began for me very organically. It, it, it happened to me. And as a result of what I was experiencing, I started researching what I was uncovering and trying to make um, some logical sense to the results I was gaining and what I was believing to happen. So nature pours a gradient means that when there's a gap in the system, nature's going to fill it in. So let's say you sprain your ankle or you tear a muscle or you break a bone. Those are all gaps in tissue. So based on that law, the body is going to do what it needs to do to rebuild that tissue or fill that tissue in because the gap has to be filled in. And what is really neat is, um, oh, it was so many years ago that I first worked on uh, my first bone fracture. And it was an 18 year old, actually this is on my YouTube channel as well to see this, an 18 year old rugby player. So he was the captain of his team. They were about to play provincials. He breaks his fourth metatarsal bone and it was a really significant break. I didn't see him until day six of his fracture and they were supposed to be playing provincials in four weeks. He was told not to wait bare for six weeks. I saw him four times. He played with no pain. Nice. So we filled in that gap in the proper way, which means if you think of baking a cake, you have flour, oil, sugar, whatever the ingredients are for the batter and you whip it up and you've got batter. If you put that batter in the freezer, you have frozen batter. If you put that batter in the oven, you bake a cake. So we need to understand what to do with injury in order to rebuild the tissue that's been broken instead of filling it in with what ultimately becomes scar tissue. And that's this process. So the whole concept of icing, I mean, I tell people like icing is not the way to go because now you're essentially freezing into your tissue, the damage, but the gap is still there. So the fascia system gets sucked in. The, the netting gets sucked into this and, and basically just the collagen, which becomes the scar tissue replaces or fills in that gap. And scar tissue doesn't have any elastability. So if it's your ankle and we've got all these beautiful ranges of motion on our ankle and we're a kid and we end up now having a decrease in range of motion, every step you take for the rest of your life is going to be altered as a result. So now that scar tissue is acting like a grip for gravity and it's going to keep pulling you and twisting you and torquing you and twisting you and torquing you. And then you're going to um, almost tip over. So then the body's going to naturally splint and do something else. And then we wind down over time in this rotational, like screwing kind of mechanism. And we become very, we become shorter and we become denser over time. So when we can actually approach trauma, whether it's emotional or physical trauma or spiritual trauma, whatever it is, if we can approach it, release it and heal the tissue appropriately in the moment, then we can go back to, okay, our bodies are aligned and they're working and they're healthy. And we can, we can grow and age in a very um, positive way. If we have all these things adding up over time, that's really what creates these issues down the road, like say fibromyalgia or um, MS or whatever it is, because as we get pulled, think of how it, it's almost like you have a flat tire one foot, it, like people pronate or supinate. Commonly we pronate, we collapse in at the ankle and one is going to be more. So it's going to be like the flat tire. So everything's going to get drawn into that over a lifetime. So now if it's my right side and I'm collapsing this way, my liver on my right side, it's getting squeezed. So now it's not going to be working as effectively my right lung. If it's over on the left side, now my heart's involved. So when we have internal issues, even it's affected by the structure of our fascia system. Think of the rib cage, it houses the heart and the lungs and other things as well. So if you had a box full of a bunch of balls and you squished the box, those balls are gonna get displaced. Some might like change their shape. So think of a heart. If a heart is being compressed under the weight of you know, our incorrect posture, it can't function with ease. So then we might end up with valves not articulating properly or the heart having to work harder to just send blood to the cells, which is its job but we're not giving that organ the space that it needs to do its job effectively. So when we can really tap into understanding what's going on in the body and how all of these injuries add up over time and create the scenario that we're dealing with, then we have a blueprint for why we're suffering and struggling with what we have. And block therapy takes you in the opposite direction. 
it dives in, it starts to find those adhesions, it releases it with that diaphragmatic breath, we start pumping blood and oxygen to cells previously blocked, they start waking up, the body is fascinating, and stronger than we could ever imagine, God built us, and we have the capacity to regenerate, we just need to feed the system what it needs, and it's, it's not hard, it's just facing where we are, and moving through it, and it's not judgmental either. So that's the beautiful piece because there could have been a trauma that was emotional from a child. And I had many, I, I wrote about them in my books. Um, puberty was not kind for me. So all of those moments that freeze your, your diaphragm. Now my diaphragm isn't functioning properly. So now I'm feeding my cells less and, and, it, and so on and so on. So it really is kind of that simple in concept. And it's really simple to do as well, because you're simply lying on this tool and you're searching for pain. It's the stuff that comes up and the healing crises that can be um, off-putting if you don't understand what they are, but that's what our community is for. And once they're released and the body moves forward and it keeps moving on its, its uh, um, forward momentum of healing, you see the beauty and the gifts of those healing crises, because on the other side of it, you have a greater range of motion or younger looking skin or your hair is fuller or your heart is working better or whatever it is. And it's all encompassing. And that's the beautiful part of it. And you don't even have to know what you're going to be addressing. The block will do its work with the breath and you just follow the path of pain, but pressure overrides pain as well. So it becomes a good pain. It's not scary. It's not a scary pain. Once you do it, people with like, for example, again, fibromyalgia who are so hypersensitive to touch, they think, wow, like how could I possibly lie on something hard? But the blocks are made of bamboo, which are similar in density to bone. So when you're lying on this with the surface area, it's like you're giving the cells in between the bone and the block a hug and they love it. And those pressure fibers kick in. And then it's almost like an itch that you can't scratch. You start getting to these cells and you start hearing what they're saying. And then you start becoming so much more intuitive with what your body actually needs to thrive. Amazing. Yes. I was just, get, I was just going to just to come to the whole pain seeking part of it because it, it, it's so, it's so the antithesis of um, conventional allopathic medicine and treatment, which yes. is, which is, which is just ma mask the pain, mask the pain, mask the pain, you know, take, take a, take a, take an ibuprofen for a, he for a headache. Um, and you, and nobody thinks about what's actually going on in the <laughs> going on in there. Yes. Um, and, and, and the, and the same for anything, same for, same for backache and, and, and anything, just go and get a prescription and get something to, to hide, hide the pain, which is, which is absurd. I, I mean, it, it's so ridiculous and, and so, and so damaging. Yes. Um, and, and, and you're, and you're, and you're right. It's not, it's not intuitive to, 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 fo fo to follow the pain because automatically you think if something's hurting, then you think, oh, I must leave that alone or I must go, I must leave it alone. I'll just let it rest. Or, um, but that's what those experiences that, that, that I had with, with, you know, um, injuries and being out, out of out of shape taught me was no was was actually the pe the pain was the 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 door opening to to the everything starting to get back into circulation and back into a, a alignment so and I always say that pain is the baby crying and you wouldn't ignore the crying baby pain mm. is simply this it's the cell's way of giving us a message and our cells if if there, there's a, a video, The Life of a Cell by David Belinsky, and um, whenever I see it, I cry. It's, it's a three minute video and it is unbelievable to watch inside one cell, the universe of activity. And to think that we have trillions of these working so hard on our behalf, it gives you a completely different appreciation for how beautiful and ingenious our bodies are. And what those cells need is space. They need room to function. If you're crushed in an elevator with 20 other people and there's smells and noises and you're trapped, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, get me out of here. If you can move freely and everything is good and, and you're in the middle of a forest and you've got nothing restricting you, life feels completely different. So for, for example, anxiety, I used to, and I used to call it that I have anxiety. Now, if I'm feeling anxious, I say my cells are anxious because they're not getting what they need right now. I might be exhausted and I might've worked too hard. I might've, you know, not eaten something healthy or I might be, you know, thinking things I shouldn't be thinking. And then I get that feeling of anxiety. But if I'm feeling that way, it's because my cells aren't getting what they need. So they're giving me a message. They're like, Deanna, 
you know, you're, you're, you're putting too much time over here and you're not sleeping enough. You're not resting enough. And now we can't function optimally. We want you to know because we want you to thrive. We don't want you to just survive. And so the cells communicate with us. And if it was all good, we wouldn't change anything, but pain is a, okay, Oh, you know what? Um, I'm hungry. You're asking me to run a marathon and you're starving me. What do you expect? Kind of thing. So understanding the language of the cell is really all that it is. And so pain is not scary. It's the fear of pain. We get trapped in a pain fear cycle. And then the fear takes us to a story that's not even real. Mm. And when we have an approach to pain and very quickly, we can see how quickly we can move beyond that pain. And then we find more pain because we're moving deeper through those layers, but then we keep moving more. And as soon as we remove more, we now have greater range in our shoulder or again, a deeper breath or whatever that is. Um, it, it becomes this people call themselves blockaholics because once they start, they just, they can't stop. They love it. <laughs> uh, that, that's really interesting that this, this is, isn't just about, about phys physical pains and aches as well. Mentioning anxiety, um, that, that, um, emo that emotional, emotional misalignment is also indications of, of, of cellular, of, of cellular imbalance, which I, you know, I, I, I know so well. Um, so that that's really interesting about the anxiety and, and the stress, because that's, as you said earlier, is a day is a daily reality for us. And that's why we always start in the ribcage in the core. We want to unlock. So, again, if you think about it, like th this beautiful plate of muscle that moves up and down, if I'm in front of my computer and I'm twisted, it's like that muscle is literally doing this. So now it has a bit of a capacity to work, but we want that full muscle to work. We've got a lot of cells to feed. So that's the key. And again, if we've had stress or if we've had a trauma, we reactively hold the breath. And if you see animals in the wild surviving um, a kill, uh, you know, they get up and they shake it off. They shake because they're letting go of that energy of fear where we freeze. People innately go into a freeze response and then they hold it and then they don't let it go. So now it's still in you. And so then now you're on, you're hypersensitive to, other things when if you could have just released it then you're starting back from a place of neutral so with block we tap in we untie we untangle we release those old patterns that were connected to the breath and we create a new breath essentially for the body and in yoga they say the goal of this lifetime is to break through the signature posture we're all born with the signature posture i see that signature posture as being the breath of the mother we as babies developing inside we adopted the identical breath of the mother we're born with her breath and she's not coming from a place of perfection because we're all human and then life afflicts us so to change the pattern of the breath changes everything it, it's really cool because if you also think about genetics passing down through families maybe your family um, has bunions or saddlebags or whatever it is all of those things are manifestations of how we breathe so if we have the opportunity to change the breath we have the opportunity to take out those patterns of lifetimes and create our own. Oh, I have so many questions I want to ask you <laughs> on, on, that, on, that, on that note. So one of the most beautiful things about this, um, this therapy is that you don't have to go to a class, is you can do it, do it at home yeah. Um, with the, the online the online programs and integrate it into your daily care or make it make it your your daily your daily practice which is just just beautiful because that that is all where you know we're going now is is taking care of ourselves you know I, I still can't go to a gym and I don't think I want to anymore anyway actually <laughs> just I've learned a lot by not going to a gym but yeah. um but nevertheless to have to have tools like this that um that, that we can we can use at home uh, that uh, honestly diana that does my heart good so good that you know you know that because i know people i know people, i have friends even even a cl very close relative who does not like exercising she, she she's not interested in taking taking care of her body and i know it's going to pay one day but but this 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 feels so so simple it's not simple from the from the from the the, the breath point of view and the uh, this being this pain explorer but ne nevertheless it's such a simple practice to because like you you've got videos showing how to use it in your chair on the sofa on the bed 
around yeah, the house. Yeah, you can lie down and do it. It's, you it's lie awesome. down and do it. Yeah. I do it in bed all the time. I mean, you know, I've, it's, it's lovely. You, you don't have to, and you can do it in different levels. You can be that person who can't get on the floor because of limitation and disability and you can start and then eventually you'll get on the floor. And you can be that elite athlete that wants to take it to a different level, include isometric resistance, which is part of um, our programs as well, so that you can really pull those cells from where they've fallen to their rightful position and create more of a workout scenario with it. People sweat when they do this and you're lying down and breathing. People don't realize the diaphragm is a huge muscle and we don't think to work it out because we don't see it yet. The function of this muscle changes your size and shape more than any other exercise will do. So by breathing diaphragmatically, you change the game. And in 2014, this made me so happy. They did a study in Australia proving 84% of weight loss comes through proper exhalation, which told me in my 20s why when I was starving myself and working out like a bandit, I was getting bigger because I wasn't breathing. And I was just compressing and getting denser and holding more toxins and becoming constipated and all those things that happens when we get really hard, the hard body. I, I'm not, I'm not one for the hard body fit and healthy are not the same thing. We can be healthy and fit, but we can also be fit and very unhealthy. And you'll see people that can run a marathon dropping dead at 50 because they're not healthy. They're fit. We want both if that's what you want, but healthy needs to be first. So that everything else after that is is positive, not negative. That is something that I think is is so is so important because um, over the, over the last the last uh, five years, there's been a, a new wave of of of, of fitness, um, you know, f fanaticism, um, yeah, yeah. Where, whereby the whole the whole of a, a social media platform is fi filled with uh, not just women but women men um proudly showing off their their hardened muscles yeah. and, and and that and that has become that's become a norm and everybody wants to to be that to have you know to have to have a six pack even even if you're a w woman just, <laughs> I don't believe women are meant to have six packs no. but 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 you're, but you're absolutely right on this Be uh, you know at this at this point at this point is, is, is where are we going with the, the fit, the fitness industry is um, the, it, it, it isn't holistic. It, it isn't holistic. No. And th this whole incorporating the, the, in, the entire body and taking it as um, taking it as taking it as a whole, but, a, but a whole in its natural state at the, at the age that it's it meant to be is something that, that I am, I've recently, very recently been, the last, since the pandemic actually, really, really starting to take on board is, is and it's so interesting what you said about um, the diaph diaphragmatic um, breathing, because, um, you know, sit-ups don't work. <laughs> oh, I used to do 400 a day and it actually made my belly bigger. I was that like insane in my twenties. I just, I was in athletic therapy. I'm working with athletes. I'm getting bigger by the moment. This isn't working and I'm doing what I'm trained to do. And it's like, how come the rules of weight loss aren't applying here? I'm, I'm doing what I'm being told. And I would take things to the extreme. So that never helps either. And so the 400 sit-ups a day created more compression, more ballooning, more constipation, more anxiety, more pain. So, I mean, there you go. <laughs> we need to be kind. We, we need to rest, we need to restore and rejuvenate now. It's, we, we've been pushing, our, our whole mindset in this world is to push and goal oriented and the faster, the more convenient, all those things as you were mentioning in the beginning, like convenience is a real problem because convenience is basically going from zero to a hundred in a moment. And it's not going through the process of what's necessary. And the process doesn't have to be hard. It's just the consistency. And I always say to people, blocking 15 minutes a day, it's going to change your life. If you put more time in, you're going to get more gains a lot faster, but you don't have to. It's not like you have to commit a whole bunch of time to this and you lie on it. So you can do it while you're entertaining yourself in front of a movie or reading a book or whatever that is. Even just sitting in front of the computer, if you're working, having it behind your back and changing your posture then you don't have to undo that forward pull that most people have. And they'll spend eight hours plus a day sometimes on a computer in that negative alignment. And that 
that adds up very quickly and it creates a lot of problems. Oh, so it certainly does. It's, it's something mm -hmm. that, I, that I'm uh, endeavoring to, to counteract at, 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 the, at the moment because, because of, of um, so much desk, desk dominated um, ac activity. But so it is, it is def it's definitely something to, 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 to be very, very, very aware of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, in, in, in a sense, the, um, the pandemic has done us, it's done, it's, there has been a lot of blessings about with the pandemic, as well as, you know, a yes. lot of, a lot of um, messiness. And, and I do think that is one of them is, is that, um, is that people are, are, are really starting to, especially, especially in our audience, you know, who, people who are listening to this, who are reading the magazine, um, who, who are interested and who are aware that, that, that their whole fulfillment, their whole life fulfillment depends on a holistic approach and probably at home, because who knows if we're, if we're ever going to be able to travel again and do we want to anyway, because it was destroying, destroying the world. So there's definitely, definitely, um, you know, this, this is so timely because we, we are on a cusp of, um, of, of new ways of, of caring for ourselves. So that's why I, I was so ex excited um, when, I, when I discovered it and why I'm so excited to be sharing it and will continue to share it uh, as well as doing it. <laughs> um, so yes, amazing. And if I could just touch on the meditation aspect because yes. you, like what you just pointed on was, was so important. We, we, we have, the, the world has changed. So where before we could be entertained through travel or whatever that was, that was all looking outside of ourselves. When you start tapping in and you start exploring the inner workings of your body and you uncover these sensations and pains and memories and emotions, and then you reap the positive benefits and, and it, you can't even explain it because there's a profoundness again, that God lives in the space and we're putting space back into the body. So th there's a depth to this that, that is hard to articulate and only the doer actually understands it. And it's fascinating and engaging. Like people will sometimes say, I was blocking for six hours today and I didn't like time flew by because it's exciting. It's exciting to really dive in and understand the inner workings of our bodies, our psyches, everything about that, the emotions, and then to see the responses, the, the things that let go and then the improvements in whatever that is. And we, we can entertain ourselves a ton by doing this. And, and that's the fun part too, because it, you become addicted because it's more than just that this is an exercise, a therapy and a meditation, but it's also an entertainment. And, and that's the fun part because we need, we need to have that in life or we've been, we, we've been that way <laughs> for so long that we, we feel we need to have that. And, and this is a beautiful way to replace what we're missing now in that regard and become the inner explorer of yourself. And, and there's no shortage of uh, interesting things to uncover. Uh, that's exactly the conclusion that, that I came to in, 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 in the last few days since, since I got my, got my beautiful block, block buddy all, all in its, in its go gorgeous little, little robe. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> that you just want to hug it as it is. <laughs> just like, I mean, how beautiful is that? Yeah, it's, it's a cutie it's pie. Gorgeous, it's gorgeous <laughs> to look at. It's gorgeous to look at. Gorgeous to feel. It's got little messages inside. But that, but what what you said is so true. Is is that this this work is for those who are interested in transformation and growth. And our audience are definitely definitely those. This is so much more than than uh, than even um, a, a pain healing tool. You're absolutely right. This is what I. I kind of was tuning into was oh my goodness I could start to explore s stories that I've been telling myself yeah. or, for, for all of these years or explanations and um and and maybe maybe find things that are actually going to al allow me to, to to do new things that I've, I've never been able to do so I, I absolutely saw it as, as, as you said, you said meditation, but as, as a total transformational tool. I mean, like, bravo. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it's, there, it's, there it's been so, a, so it's many, a very so fun many, journey. I'm sorry. 
Go ahead. Good. Just, it's, good. it's been a very uh, process. Yeah. 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 Oh, are we cutting out here? Uh, yeah. No, I just said it. it, it it's been a very, very interesting journey. Yeah. So it back. certainly is. Yes. So we, have, we do have a little wobble. Anyway, I think I think we've said said. Um, the most important things today. This isn't this isn't the end of this conversation. Um, we are going to have you back at some point to, to dive deeper into um, the all exciting, <laughs> all exciting topic of uh, age. I don't like to call it age reversal. I, I like to call it age priming. Uh, certainly, this whole revolution that that is that is now starting. So for today, we're going to share all the links that we need to so that people can discover block therapy. I never thought the expression going to the blocks would be <laughs> going to my block <laughs> would be something, but it, it is absolutely, you've heard Diana talk about this today. It, it is revolutionary. And uh, for those who are interested in their self-care, uh, you know, for, 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 for one small investment that you've got for the rest of your life, uh, is is uh, just uh, an absolute gift. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be your biggest champion, and uh, I just want to thank you and thank you for all of your knowledge. I know that 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 you have had so much knowledge and experience and research, and uh, helped so many people as, as well. So that uh, that absolutely come you know, comes comes through. It is it is obvious that you you know about this really important topic. So Diana, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to coming back. <laughs>